welcome to Kodiak Island, Alaska. Very unusual today, but this is a Chamber of Commerce Day on the island, and it's a bluebird day, which doesn't happen very regular. So we're gonna be hunting this week with big wild outfitters, and we're gonna be doing something kind of unique. Uh, Best of the West sent their world famous cameraman, Terrence Knudsen with us, and uh, he's filming for Best of the West because I'm shooting the Best of the West 300 rum. And uh, also, he's filming for my show, Real Hunts and Real Stories. So we're gonna get a twofer out of this deal. And hopefully, we're gonna show you something that's a little Western, and hopefully, it's gonna get really real. So Big Wild Outfitters established in 2016 uh, by my partner Rick Heiss and I. Uh, Rick and I have been working together now for 16 years and we were lucky enough to take over a fantastic area here in the southeast end of Kodiak Island. Uh, took over for Gus Lamoureux. Uh, we also have an interior area uh, where we do grizzly bear, doll sheep and moose. And here in our area here on Kodiak we do brown bear both spring and fall, mountain goat and sick of black tailed deer. With the overall hunt with Big Wild Outfitters, hunts like our spring brown bear here, um, we try to bring the full package and give you a quality hunt. Uh, there's a good chance we're gonna see good bears, but we also wanna give you that experience of, of camp life. We have four cabins here right along the ocean, so you're coming back to a warm, dry cabin every night. We bring down two cooks to feed you really well. I feel blessed to be able to offer a place like this uh, to guys and to show them what Kodiak is all about. It's not just the bears, it's not just the goats, it's the deer, it's the sea life. You have the whales, the seals, the otters, uh, the high tide, low tide, everything that goes with it. It, it kind of encompasses the true meaning of an of Alaskan hunt. And it's not just a, I want to go kill a bear and, and get it over with. It's really seeing what Alaska has to offer and, and taking it all in. And when you get lucky enough to see a day like today, there's really no prettier place you'd want to be. Because the weather is so unpredictable on Kodiak Island, it's very important to make the most of each day. Even though the days are long this time of year, on average, hunters lose two days of a 10-day hunt to bad weather. With his gun zeroed and waders on, Rick is ready for whatever Kodiak has in store. like maybe this week this is going to be our mode of transportation. Rick bought a brand new 40 foot boat so we're going to patrol the beaches and see if we can catch a female that's in heat and a male following her. And uh, I had back surgery four weeks ago Monday so it's only been just a few weeks and I'm pretty weak and not very nimble so this actually fits me real well riding in the boat and spotting. So. Anyway, we'll see what happens today. The weather's been nasty, so maybe if it clears this afternoon, we'll, the bears will get on their feet. Maybe we'll have a little action. The challenge of hunting from a boat, as you might have already guessed, is glassing. By taking lots of breaks and allowing your eyes to slowly adjust, it doesn't take too long to get the hang of it. The upside to using a boat is the amount of ground that can be covered in a day without having to take a single step. With 15 hours of huntable daylight this time of year, time is in great supply. It's just patience that tends to run low every now and then. With rut activity increasing each day, locating a boar in pursuit of a sow in heat is the overall objective. We've been floating along this morning. I guess it's, uh, it's a little after 12. We finally spotted our first bear and it looks like a good one. Now we're just trying to figure out what he's going to do so we can put up some kind of a setup on him. Hopefully he works his way down into this valley here and then we can get on the beach and either call him in or see if we can put a short stalk to him. But 
if he just continues what he's doing, he's working the way we need him to. So, hey, at least we got to see a bear the first morning anyway. When the best of the West continues, it's time to storm the beach and send in the infantry unit. Keep it right here on your long range hunting authority. The Best of the West is brought to you by Hornady, accurate, deadly, dependable. Zeiss spotting scopes and range finding binoculars. Hunt and Fool. The Best of the West shooting systems. Defiance custom actions. The Wild Sheep Foundation. Huskama Optics and LongRangeStore.com. Whether near or far, hunting big bears is both heart pounding and challenging. In past seasons of the best of the West, we've been fortunate to see our fair share of big Bruins hit the deck. Right there, right there. Three years ago, we followed Kevin Norman on his brown bear hunt in Alaska. After an all-day stalk in the rain, Kevin was able to locate a breeding pair moving through the alders. With only a small window to get a shot off, Kevin did some poking of his own and put two strikes into the side of his first brown bear. Best of the West jumped at the opportunity of following Rick Frazier of Real Hunts, Real Stories on his brown bear hunt this season. Rick is a been there, done that type of hunter, and along for some of his most memorable hunts has been his Best of the West Custom 300 rum. Now with North America's apex predator in his sights, Rick is closing in on the trophy of a lifetime. I grew up hunting. My father hunted when I was a kid and he carried me long before I could carry a gun. And um, I fell in love with it and his, and his daddy got older, he kind of drifted away from it and the older I got, the more serious I got about it. And as I began to be able to afford some hunts, I said, you know what, I'm not gonna wait till retirement to start that. I'm, I'm gonna start hunting and, and doing the things I enjoy. And I was running a successful business, but I wasn't necessarily happy at the office and this is the only time that I'm at peace is when I'm in the wilderness or in the bush somewhere across the world. And so several years ago, I started my own television show, Real Hunts and Real Stories. And I named it that because I see a lot of shows where they stage things and then they go back and reenact all of that. And I said, I'm not gonna do that. I want mine to be what it is. If I miss, by God, I missed. And we show it exactly. If you hear me huffing and puffing on the microphone, we don't cut that off. That's just me, you know. This is a this is a crippled man that's overweight, and needs to lose 25 pounds, but it is what it is. So, this is what I live for anymore: is is being in the outdoors. And like I said earlier, I don't really have any business being here. I, I put a lot of times my health secondary to just see if I can continue to to still do what I love to do, which is climb a mountain, hunt sheep, or hunt goats, or this week it was to hunt a brown bear. I brought my uh, good friend Mark Springle from Washington State with me, and he had never hunted brown bear, and I had before, but he, he always wanted to, and I, I tried to forewarn him about Kodiak Island. I said, it's rugged, it's nasty, and you go from sea level to 3,000 feet in a short amount of time, so you need to be mentally prepared and you're gonna get wet and the wind's gonna blow like a hurricane and then you get a day like today where it's absolutely gorgeous. So the one muscle that you have to be able to control is the one between your ears. In Kodiak, Alaska, we're here with Big Wild. And this is the second time I've been here. I came here two years ago on a sick of black tail hunt met Clay and met Rick and met everybody, Blake and Skyler and and had a great time, got a really, really nice blacktail and, and uh, told Clay that if he ever gets a 
chance for me to sign up for the brown bear hunt. I'd like to do it and had to wait two or three years, but I'm here and this is day two. Yes, first day we went after a big bear and had a big hike way up in the mountains and never caught up to it. He was on the move after a female, it sounded like, and never did catch up to it. And then yesterday we went up in different drainage and walked in four and a half miles up on top of a little mountain and a big bear came out right in front of us and laid down 450 yards. Looked like a really good bear, but he laid down so fast we couldn't really judge him and Clay was debating on whether he was big enough or not. And I was talking to him, telling him how pretty it was and how beautiful the hide was. It's just a gorgeous bear. Finally, after half an hour or so, we decided to walk down and get within range in case it was big enough. And got down 455 yards away. Got him up on his feet. There he goes. Again, again, again. Again. All right, you ready? Hey! Hey! I started off with a yell and Bear could care less. He just continued on his nap. And then I gave a, a cow call for Moose, which I'm sure he hasn't heard very often, but uh, he jumped up and was just starting to turn away and Mark made a fantastic double lung there shot. Up again, again, again. And I was able to put a second shot into him and the bear ran 30 yards and, and there he lay. So it was, it was a really fantastic stock. Uh, great to get up close and personal with a bear like that and uh, ended up being a, a fantastic bear. I uh, underjudged it. Ended up being a lot bigger than, than what we thought. So no ground shrinkage and just happier as, as we got closer. What a bear. Yeah. Yep. Two shots, two hits. He went about 30 yards. Well, here's the results of our, our hunt today. He, uh, there's no ground shrinkage. He's better than what we thought. He's, uh, he's gorgeous. You can see the hide on him in his face. Up here in Kodak, Alaska with Big Wild. Clay took me out and found me this bear. I sure appreciate it, Clay. Thank you very much. This is amazing. Everything I dreamed it would be. Officially measuring 28 inches and 14 sixteenths, this big boy is in the top 29 all time. With a Boone and Crockett bear on the ground before lunchtime, there's still plenty of time to make something happen on the SS Big Wild with guide Rick Heiss. Morning number two, Kodiak Island. And as you can see in the background, weather's still not very good and it was atrocious yesterday. But on the first day, we did see several bears and saw one good boar. So. And uh, around the corner here, a mile or so, we got a female we think maybe starting to get hot. So hopefully we can find her again and maybe they've met each other and they're in the courtship. So. We'll try to end that pretty shortly, but uh, you guys sit back and relax and uh, enjoy the view from Kodiak, Alaska. Well, day two dawned and you couldn't see your hand in front of your face for very much most of the day, yet we loaded the boat and went on just like we thought we were supposed to. I don't know, it was way late in the afternoon after lunch before we ever got to where we could see the mountaintops. And we got a text message from Clay and Mark that they took a bear right at lunchtime. And um, we were floating over on the southern side of this bay and I don't know how that Rick High spotted this bear because it was two miles away completely across the bay. And he said, that's a bear, and it looks like a good one, and we're going to go take a closer look at him. So we floated the bay, and we unloaded on a beach that I renamed Normandy. The only thing different was that the Germans weren't shooting at us because the surf was terrible. We all got wet, but we got off, and we got off safely, and the stalk started. Folks, I'll tell you quite honestly, I have no business being here on this hunting trip. Four weeks ago, 
I had major back surgery, a fusion, and I wasn't sure that I was even going to be able to make the trip, and if I got here, I wasn't sure that I was going to be able to hunt, and if it hadn't been for that boat, very likely that I probably wouldn't, but once we offloaded on the beach, we had a probably an hour, hour and a half stalk to get ahead of the bear that we had spotted and make sure that he didn't get all the way around us. And uh, I've been laying in a bed most of the last three months, so I'm weak, legs were useless, but uh, somebody smiled on me from above and gave me enough strength to get to where we could get to the top. And then we started working our way down, looking through the alders and uh, Rick Heiss, which is my guide, he was in front of us and all of a sudden he stopped and ducked and I knew he could see the bear and I couldn't see it, but Terrence is 6'4", so he could see it, so I was the only one that couldn't see it. But anyway, we backed up a little bit and the bear was working through the alders and uh, we were pretty sure he was gonna cross and I got set up on the sticks. Terrence said, hey, I see him, and then I got a picture of him and uh, my back was spasming, my legs were shaking, and I thought to myself, you know, you don't need to fool around here too long when you get a decent shot. The Best of the West is brought to you by Hornady, accurate, deadly, dependable. Zeiss spotting scopes and range finding binoculars. Hunt and Fool. The Best of the West shooting systems. Defiance Custom Actions, The Wild Sheep Foundation, Huskama Optics, and LongRangeStore.com. For information on hunting with big wild outfitters, please call 907-250-6754 or go online to BigWildOutfitters.com. For more information about the products and gear used on today's show, please visit LongRangeStore.com or call 1-866-754-7618. And I thought to myself, you know, you don't need to fool around here too long when you get a decent shot. And so the footage is probably not the best that it could have been if I'd let him continue to walk out. But I got an open shot in the brush and uh, I said, Terrence, are you good? He said, I've got him. And uh, I touched the best of the West 300 rum off and the bear spun and 30 yards later he piled up. And of course, you know he died in the nastiest place there was to die. Holy shit. Ah, a big head. All right, folks, this is our second day on Kodiak Island. We're hunting this week with big wild outfitters. And my old buddy Rick Heiss, we've hunted together several times, and this is mine and his second brown bear. I don't know how he spotted this bear. We were completely across the bay, a mile and a half away. We came all the way across. We made a stalk up and behind. And I'm just four weeks out of major back surgery. I wasn't even sure I could climb to this bear. And we got up and when we peeked out over the top, we were right on top of him. And we got positioned and he come out and he gave me a, I didn't take very long, Terrence will tell you. I asked him, are you got him? He said, I've got him. And shortly after that, that best of the West 300 rum barked. Of course, you know the bear had to run and die in the worst place there is on this hillside, but He's laying here on the ground, he's dead. He's going back to Texas and he's got a great big pumpkin up there. So we're tickled to death. My old buddy Mark Springle tagged out this morning with Clay Roberts. So we've got a two for today on the second day. My partner Rick Heiss and I were lucky enough to take over this area here in Cuyugneck Bay uh, from Gus Lamoureux who had owned it for many, many years and it took over it from his dad from there. So I feel very privileged and honored to take over an area from a, a guy as well known as Gus and who stressed conservation and ran a quality business 
not so much to kill every man he sees, but to manage uh, a good population and to stress refuge conservation here in Kodiak. And also in our interior area, we took over for a guy named Ray Atkins, who'd been up there for 50 years, who also ran a conservation priority type business where the animals come first, the industry comes second, and safety is right up there on top as well. So I am excited to continue on with Big Wild, these guys' legacies, to really stress conservation, make the refuge well known, promote Alaska as an ultimate hunting ground, but also just a place that every outdoor person needs to see. Not so much to kill something, but to just see the mountains, the ocean, the experience, the weather, and the harshness of Alaska too, to put things to perspective for you, to really just give you the, a, a true outdoor experience that everyone deserves. Thanks for watching this episode of The Best of the West. Please join us next time for more long range hunting adventures.